Hi, everyone. I'm Josh Revels. I'm an education outreach specialist at the Katherine Johnson NASA Independent Verification and Validation Facilities Education Resource Center, or ERC, uh, which is, by the way, located in Fairmont, West Virginia, and just off of I-79. Maybe you've seen this building if you've gone by uh, that location. And this is, this is where I get to work in the ERC. And uh, today I'm here to talk to you about citizen science, and hopefully you will learn a little bit about what citizen science is, get motivated to help out with citizen science in some way. And uh, uh, so, yeah, thanks for joining. And I'm going to start by giving this little quote that is kind of really my own quote, quoting myself here. Everyone is a scientist, even if they don't want to be. And I'm going to start by explaining how that's true. And so before I do that, let me get a little bit more background on who I am. And uh, that way you get an idea of, of why I am encouraging you to do this. And so I'm a chemistry, physics, and earth and space science certified educator who trains teachers and works with students at the NASA IVNV facility. I've been there for four years now. And uh, as part of my job in providing professional development, to K-12 teachers throughout our state, I have uh, gone through the GLOBE uh, training to become a GLOBE trainer. And so that's one type of citizen science that we engage in. And there are a couple other opportunities that I'm going to also share with you all today during this video that you might be interested in. And so I earned my master's degree uh, in education through Fairmont State University. Uh, I taught for five years at a, at a high school in West Virginia, at Elkins High School, and uh, I was also an undergraduate at Fairmont State University, and uh, what, when I was doing that, I actually was an intern at the NASA ERC, and so I've, I've been around the ERC for a while and have been engaging in these projects for over a decade now, and I really would like to have you help me expand our abilities to do citizen science in West Virginia. And so what is it to be a scientist? What's it like if you're a scientist? Well, scientists observe their surroundings through their five senses. They make measurements and collect data. They try things out. So with varying degrees of complication, they experiment a little bit. And they make inferences from those observations and available evidence. So an inference is, you know, an idea, or you've come to a conclusion about what has happened without really knowing exactly what happened, but using the available clues or evidence to uh, help you come up with something that seems scientifically possible. We classify items and information. We look for patterns and trends and groups and create them. And that's a really big one for citizen science. And we use this knowledge that we acquire through these scientific processes to predict future outcomes. And so how are you a scientist? Well, you try different foods, outfits, that you want to wear, products that you try out, and you basically do all of these scientific process skills. You observe, you collect data about them, and you do this because you want to select maybe the best thing or what your favorite is. And so this really is, in a way, behaving as a scientist. And so you do this every day. Maybe you have a driver's license and you can drive. And as you're driving, you're reading the speedometer and measuring how fast you're traveling. Or you're using a GPS to, get, to help you get from place to place and figuring out how long it's going to take you to get there. You experiment with different types of paint for a craft, for a project. Maybe if you're an artist, you would do this. But this is also a behavior that a scientist exhibits. Maybe you want to predict the weather at your location for the next hour because you're planning an event and trying to decide if it's going to be inside or outside. 
something that you do if you're uh, at the age of to, to vote in our country is you actually elect officials who maybe you haven't realized in turn vote on policies related to the environment, social gatherings, even funding of different scientific research projects through grants that are awarded. You, so even just with your vote, you're influencing what science can be done, what science is funded and encouraged, and what science uh, research isn't. And maybe you actively perform science research and you do this to improve the quality of life, such as creating vaccines and medications or improving technology to take better data uh, uh, observations. Maybe you're out to improve the environmental conditions and maybe you already are involved in citizen science. And so citizen science is what we are gonna focus on. So what is it? And how do you intentionally engage in citizen science? So you can publicly participate, or sorry, as, as the public, you can go and participate voluntarily in scientific research through many citizen science projects. And so to do this, you would gather data and increase the information that we have available in scientific databases, like the one that's pictured here from uh, globe.gov's data visualization tool. And so what you see here in this image is actually data count. So how many uh, observations were recorded and submitted to the database? And so the larger circles indicate a larger amount of data collection points that are in the system. And you'll notice that there are areas surrounding West Virginia where there's a lot of data collection being uh, completed. And so my goal is to see these bubbles expand and cover West Virginia. And so why would you do that? Well, there are a lot of pros of citizen science. It's a fast data acquisition process over widespread areas is the first thing. And so that means that it costs less for scientists attempting to solve a problem or to improve a particular condition. So they get a bigger perspective of what's happening across the country or across West Virginia or across the globe, uh, the more data points that are available. And when you participate in citizen science, you can do it as a community hub across West Virginia. Get together in your community and participate in a particular citizen science project, and that will provide a sense of community. You also make conclusions that are made more reliable because you would take in a particular location a lot more data points. And so by seeing repeatable data, we can guarantee that our conclusions that we're creating are more possible and those data points that we're basing it off of are more reliable. And there are a lot more pros of citizen science here. Individuals can use scientific evidence to make local decisions. And so you can have science that's driven by culture, history, and uh, societal needs and wants in your particular community. You can also, uh, if you're a student, use the data available on, for example, the GLOBE website or other citizen science websites that this data is publicly available to you, and you can use it to create your own science fair projects. And if you're not a student, maybe you're an adult or uh, you have no classes that you're taking right now, this can help you improve your scientific literacy. All the different things that go into doing scientific research become more apparent as you actively participate in them. And so you understand other scientific projects that you're not working on uh, a lot better than you were if you didn't participate in science at all. And so citizen science projects are actually aimed at the public because of their convenience for, for them to participate in it as well. It doesn't take a lot of education or knowledge to get started in this. And it is something that you do grow and develop and learn more about as you're participating in it. And so this also allows you to connect with others across the world to, to perform science. And so that helps you gain different perspectives about life as well. 
So really the pros of citizen science are endless. Now, uh, also another reason to have citizens do this, like I mentioned, was the widespread data collection. And so we've reached a point in, in life now where geospatial technology is advanced and is advancing rapidly still so that we can improve your experience participating in citizen science. And so I, I like to say that citizen science can actually rely on this geospatial technology. And so, for example, many data points now include GPS coordinates in, uh, in the process of doing a citizen science project. And that's because knowing where particular things are located help us see the big picture. And so this is one particular example. This is well map, uh, well map. And um, you can see that uh, this citizen science project is aimed at sighting whales and putting in coordinates and tracking them where they are across the ocean. So this could be helpful for finding their migration patterns, their feeding patterns, and help understand that ecosystem a bit better and what what human influences are affecting them uh, as well is something that we can study or monitor by having people participate actively in this citizen science project now in west virginia maybe this isn't something that you would think is very convenient you're not going to be out <laughs> on the ocean anytime soon to do this but uh there are a lot of other citizen science projects that you can participate in. And so that brings me to my second point, compiling data on a map uh, enhances our ability to find these trends and patterns. And so this is an example of one from the globe visualization system. This is something that you would maybe want to participate in right here in West Virginia. And so you could see here that we're looking at air temperatures and so we can see patterns just by looking at this particular map that really isn't super sophisticated. I know a lot of people that could take the data from this website and create very visual uh, representations of data to give an idea of what's happening over time and over widespread area. But you, even just in this little snippet, you can see how a lot of data points can help us see the big picture and find these trends and patterns. And so we need you to do this. So how can you get involved? Well, you can browse the internet for local projects and select a project that is for you. So how do you know what's a project for you? Is it convenient into your daily life? Is it something that you're concerned of, you know, about? Is this a topic that you're interested in? And will my community benefit? And so I've got a link here that redirects us back to the NASA Ivy and V Education Resource Center's website, where we have citizen science projects that West Virginians might be particularly interested in. And so I've talked a lot already about the GLOBE program. By the way, I am a GLOBE trainer. I didn't mention that earlier, and I can do educator and student trainings for anybody that wants to learn how to do a GLOBE protocol. Uh, I'd be happy to do that. Check the description of this YouTube video for my contact information. And then we've got Light Up West Virginia, which really seems like a really fun citizen science project that I've yet to do any data collection for, but I really want to. And so for unknown reasons, fireflies, also known as lightning bugs, have been declining across their range. And so we're seeing different species, uh, or actually we're seeing less of different species in West Virginia. And so almost every West Virginian child probably remember seeing a majestic flashing display of fireflies growing up. And we would like to, to keep that alive. And all of those different species of fireflies, we would like to keep this their home as well. And so each species has a unique flashing pattern. So you can go to Light Up West Virginia's website and learn about how you can spot those different uh, lightning bug patterns. Oh, here's a neat map too, uh, that they are reporting their data with. So this is going to be another geospatial reliant citizen science project. And so here's a cool video that it shows the male mating pattern of their, their display, their color, their, luminate, their luminescence display. 
the female doublet is shown here. Lots of things that you can learn. A cool video here that you can check out more. Uh, and so, yeah, if you want to learn how to track the different species of fireflies in West Virginia and report them so that they can expand and have a more reliable map here to show, uh, definitely get involved with that. We also have West Virginia DNR's uh, box turtle sightings. So very similar. Where do you see this particular box turtle? When you see it, how do you document it? Oh, and their page has uh, been updated. So I'm gonna have to update the, the link here on our website, but let's try the tiny URL. Yeah, it's taking us to ArcGIS survey. Okay, yeah, so a lot of the information that you need to actually do the citizen science project is available here. And this is where you would submit your, uh, submit your information when you have a sighting to contribute to their project. And so these are things that you can learn about and get a little bit more knowledgeable of the science of box turtles and how they behave, also fireflies in West Virginia. If you wanna learn about the atmosphere and other uh, physical science aspects of the earth systems of the hydrosphere or uh, the geosphere, the GLOBE program is something for you. So consider checking those out because you're already a scientist. Everyone is, even if they don't wanna be, they are. So if you want to intentionally participate in a science project, uh, and improve our scientific knowledge, you can do that through those citizen science programs. If you aren't sure how to get started and maybe you don't wanna particularly contact me because I'm not close to you, or uh, maybe there's somebody closer to you that can help you get something started, uh, talk to your local library, see what community projects they have going on or which ones that you would like to try to start at their library. I know that Fairmont State University is making strides. We have students on campus that are helping to create a database of citizen science projects to share with educators in West Virginia. And I think they're also trying to maybe think about how they can improve the West Virginia specific citizen science uh, projects and how to make them more convenient to participate in. I know that Fairmont State's Creative Sustainability Council is making a campus route uh, they're working on it. They have plans to do this where there will be stops along maybe a nature trail or something where you can engage in citizen science while you're on your walk or learn about environmental sustainability practices. And uh, again, the NASA ERC, we're training libraries across West Virginia to help them become more knowledgeable on the globe citizen science and also more that we're discovering now uh, as well. So Please get involved with citizen science, and if you have questions, let me know. Thanks for joining me.